Hey beauties, welcome back to another episode of Kim Cooks Live where I teach you how to make really delicious recipes that are amazing for building your health, your beauty, and your energy. All these recipes are again very delicious, plant-based, and super easy to make. So today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make my gluten-free guacamole pizza. And this is a really great recipe to have for lunch sometimes or a snack. It's really great if you have someone in your life that's transitioning into getting away from dairy, transitioning into plant-based foods, that person could be yourself. Um, anytime you sort of get a cheese craving or a dairy craving, um, or you want something that's familiar, like a pizza, it's a really great, fast, easy dish that you can make at home um, in just a few minutes. So, the base for our pizza is um, this gluten-free tortilla. Here, I'm using a black rice tortilla from this company, Food for Life. You can look at your health, local health market, or you can even get these tortillas online. Um, they make a brown rice one. There's um, teff, gluten-free wraps, there's all different kinds. But basically, this is gonna be the base for our pizza. And when I'm making this um, for my partner, and he's really hungry for lunch, and he is definitely transitioning to eating more plant foods, um, I'll usually make two. But I'm gonna show you guys how to make one. You can see the shape of this. It very much does look like a nice little mini pizza. So this may be enough for you, you may need to double it. So we're just gonna put it here nice and flat. And here what I have is um, Daya cheese, which you may see in the market. It's a really popular dairy alternative now. It's dairy-free, casein-free, um, gluten-free, soy-free, cholesterol-free. Is it perfect? No. Does it have vegetable oils? Yes. Does it have perfect ingredients? No. But is it a pretty good dairy replacement? Yes. And does it satisfy cheese cravings? Yes. I think it's a good transition, transition food that you can work in sometimes. Um, and so that's what we're going to use in our recipe today. Again, remember, progress, not perfection. And not every food, especially if it's a transition food, has to be perfect. What we're going to do is we're just going to take this out. We're going to spread it out on our on our tortilla here, or pizza base. This is obviously gonna be a thin crust pizza, which is used to be my favorite type of pizza. I never really liked the thick crust kind anyway. Um, so we're just gonna take it and we're gonna spread it in a nice thin layer, just as if you were spreading um, regular dairy mozzarella shreds, like that. We're gonna spread it out. And what I've done, and if you're doing this at home, you would, um, I should have said this at the beginning, but to preheat your oven at 375 degrees, I have been actually cooking another one so that you guys can see what it looks like more melted. So depending on your oven, you would preheat to 375, you would take this, you would put it on a baking dish into your oven and you would bake it depending on your oven. There's Bubby right there playing with his blocks. I'll bring him in in a second to say hello. But we had this gate in the kitchen. Obviously when mama's cooking when there's hot things, he's not allowed in the kitchen at all. Anyways, back to our pizza. <laughs> you would bake it at 375 for anywhere from five to seven minutes, depending how crispy you like it, depending on your oven. We want the cheese, the diet cheese, to melt a little bit and it will make an even layer. So let me pull out the one that I've been baking and I'll show you what that one looks like. It's probably thinning here, I would say, seven minutes or so. So it looks like this. You can see that the cheese is starting to melt. Um, it's still a little bit, it's not totally melted, but it, it's pretty good to me. And I don't want to go, um, I don't want to go to the level where it's like, you know, the gluten-free crust starts to burn or anything like that. So, this is what it looks like so far. I'm gonna move this one to the side. So while, imagine, imagine that this is, um, Continuing to um, this is imagine this is cooking at the same time you're going to start to make the guacamole topping for your pizza. So I'm taking this little avocado. Sorry, sweetheart, play with Auntie. Mommy will be down in a minute. And I'm cutting open this. I'm cutting open this avocado. And for a whole pizza, I'm going to use a whole small avocado like this. Um, a medium one, I'd probably use the whole one too. And I'm just going to. Open it up. Bobby's playing with Auntie for a minute. And I will be with you in just a minute, Bobby. So I try to time these videos when he's taking a nap, um, but it's really hard because when he's taking a nap, I'm trying to do other stuff. So real world stuff, right? 
Okay, so we have the avocado in a little bowl like this. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of lemon. This is a lemon that um, was really juicy, so it's just the end of the lemon. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Give it a nice little squeeze into my bowl. We're just basically making a really simple guacamole. And I'm gonna take some black pepper. You guys know I talk about this a lot, but basically I'm not using any garlic anymore. Um, I just found that, you know, it's considered an Ayurveda, a very uh, pitta, sort of aggravating, rajastic food. And I've noticed that since I've given it up, along with going deeper in my own yoga practice, I have felt calmer in general. So I just, I'm not putting any, um, not putting any garlic at all in my particular guacamole. But of course, if you like garlic, you can do it yourself. So I just added a little squeeze of salt, um, a little shake of salt rather, some freshly ground black pepper. Always wanna use this fresh. Not only does it taste better, but the natural oils in the pepper don't go rancid. Um, there's some really great properties in black pepper, but we really wanna make sure we use it fresh. So I'm gonna take a fork and I'm just going to mash it down. And make a very simple, easy guacamole. Now, one of my favorite kitchen, um, my favorite piece of the kitchen equipment, which I should have busted out for a little video, but it's too late now, it's okay, is a mortar and pestle. I love it when you go to Mexico, or Mexican restaurants, and they make the guacamole for you table side, and they have their beautiful stone mortar and pestles. So of course, that would probably be um, a more beautiful way to make this. Um, but for now, we're just gonna keep it really simple like this. Okay, so now my guacamole looks like this. It's just mashed up. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure our cutting board is nice and clean here. Move these utensils out of the way. I'm a big fan of trying to keep your kitchen space neat as you go, otherwise at the end you're hit with this bomb. The other thing I like to do is just wash my utensils as I go and reuse them as I need to. So it does, you know, at the end of cooking, um, you don't have this whole huge pile and I feel like you're less, you're more likely to want to cook at home more if it's just more accessible, more easy. So I encourage you guys to just clean stuff as you go. Oh, it just makes it more easy and more doable especially if you're a mom and there's always mess around and Bubby's high chair and the floor and everything. <sighs> Keeping it clean. So this is the melted cheese. To, keep, to be clear, we just melted the cheese on top. We didn't do anything else. We did not heat up the guacamole. I'm gonna take the guacamole now and I'm gonna put it right on top of the cheese. So hence the name, gluten-free guacamole pizza. This doesn't have any red sauce. This, I guess you would consider a version of like a white pizza. <laughs> My own version, which doesn't have sauce, but it has this other component of the guacamole, which is right on top. I'm gonna go ahead and take the back of my spoon and just mush my guacamole over the entire pizza, like this. Ta-da! Looks nice so far. And now, hold on one second, and we get final component to look really beautiful in my fridge, and that is microgreens. So I washed these before, that's why there's condensation. Um, these are daikon radish microgreens, and these are broccoli microgreens. Everything looks better with microgreens, and microgreens are amazing for um, nutrition. They're really concentrated little plants that, um, again, really just add a lot of nutrition. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do first? I'm going to take my pizza cutter, my roller here, and just like a regular pizza, I'm gonna go across. And sometimes with this type of tortilla, I still do it in eight. <laughs> so you get little mini slices. Like that. Okay. Clean this plate off like this. So of course you wanna cut your pizza on your cutting board. And sometimes you can, you can arrange it in different ways. I'm gonna put it more or less into the shape of a 
pizza. I'm gonna keep the round shape like this. And then I'm going to take the microgreens now so I don't have to cut them and they'll look pretty right on the plate. And I just sprinkle them right on top. So I'm doing some daikon ones, which are this beautiful purple. And then I'm going to take the broccoli microgreens, which are green, and just accentuate. Ta-da! So this is what the gluten-free guacamole pizza looks like. It's gluten-free, it's delicious, it's got beauty fat in it, it's got minerals, um, it's got some vitamin C from the lemon juice. It's got a lot of uh, different amino acids and enzymes from these little microgreens. So here's what a piece looks like. Mm. Oh my God. So delicious, so tasty, great weekend lunch or fast dinner or snack. Again, diet cheese is a good um, alternative to work in, good cheese alternative sometimes. Not an everyday product to eat, but a good one, a good craving slash transition food slash sometimes food. Progress, not perfection. So I'll give you guys a last little look at my pizza. So I hope you guys try this for yourselves at home. Remember the gluten-free wrap can be anything from black rice to brown rice to teff. Um, but you can get the tortillas in the refrigerated section usually at any health market or you can get them online um, and everything else should be pretty easy to source so thank you guys so much for tuning in um, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel kim cooks live so that you never miss a show so you can always come and ask me questions on how to cook these delicious meals so you can bring them to life in your own in your own kitchen uh, which is my greatest wish for you guys to really nurture yourselves nurture your beauty your skin your hair your health, your energy, your overall vitality, um, what we eat is connected to not only outer beauty, but our moods and our energy and just our overall happiness and joy and peace. So thank you guys so much. Wishing you guys all the best. Uh, remember, there's lots more recipes on KimberlyCenter.com that you can also check out. Lots of love.